Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of Smarter Faster Better. The Secrets of Being Productive in Life and Business by Charles Duhigg. Charles Duhigg, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, provides us with the how-to of working smarter, not harder. Duhigg defines productivity as learning how to succeed with less stress and struggle. Getting things done without sacrificing everything we care about is the goal of this book, written by Charles Duhigg, who spent years interviewing highly productive people from all over the world. When it comes to being productive, the most important takeaway is that managing your mindset is more important than writing out a to-do list, this is the secret behind their success. With the help of amusing anecdotes, Duhigg tries to get us to consider why we do the things we do and how we can improve upon that behavior. Despite the fact that Duhigg spends most of the book discussing productivity, he also discusses effective management, teamwork, and how to spark innovation in your organization as well. This book is a must-read if you're trying to lead and motivate a team or working towards a long-term goal. This concise summary will explain what it means to be productive and why autonomy and meaning are critical to staying motivated. The importance of goal setting will also be discussed. Setting goals, managing big and small goals, and using mental models to improve focus are all topics we'll cover today. One of the best ways to increase productivity is to build high-performing teams. What does it mean to be productive? Some people merely pretend to be productive. Their resumes may look impressive at first glance, but their greatest skill is in self-promotion. Then there are others, like Atul Gawande, who seem to exist on a different level of accomplishing tasks. Dr. Atul Gawande is an author for the New York Times and a leading surgeon. As an associate professor at Harvard and an advisor to the World Health Organization, his impressive resume doesn't stop there. A philanthropist, he also founded a nonprofit that sends medical supplies to developing countries. When he was awarded the MacArthur Genius Grant in 2006, Duhigg was curious about how someone with so little time and so much on the go managed to accomplish so much in such a short period of time. When Duhigg requested an interview with Gawande via email, the latter politely declined, citing a conflicting schedule. Duhigg was disappointed, but not at all surprised. If you ask a mutual friend, they will tell you that Gawande's obligations are not work-related, they are family time. Most of us confuse productivity with something that is work-focused, but this is a common mistake and belief. However, coping with the stresses and strains of daily life is the key to being more productive. To be productive, we must be able to get things done without sacrificing what is most important to us. To measure our productivity, we need to know what our priorities are. In the words of Charles Duhigg, productivity is the name we give our attempts to figure out the best uses of our energy, intellect, and time in order to seize the most meaningful rewards with the least wasted effort. Smarter, faster, better teaches us how to recognize the options we have. We can make the most of each day by evaluating our options and determining which ones are positive and which are negative. Motivation is about making choices. Instead of being told what to do, how does it feel to be given the option of doing something? When it comes to improving our motivation, we need to recognize the importance of choice and the bigger picture and embrace the power of choice. Duhigg sees personal autonomy and meaning as two of the most important factors in a person's motivation. A motivating factor is the sense of control and autonomy you feel when you're in charge of your own destiny. In other words, the most important aspect of working smarter, faster, and better is to focus on our motivation through control and meaning. Everything we have to do is a choice, not a duty. The striatum, the part of the brain responsible for motivation, was the subject of a study cited by Duhigg. Participants in an MRI were asked to guess whether a number they were shown was above or below 5 before being shown the number. At the beginning of the experiment, when participants were asked to choose between higher and lower, their enthusiasm and motivation were high. In contrast, when half of the guesses were made by a computer, the enthusiasm of the participants decreased. This is because making a decision is an important part of being able to take action and be productive. What if you're struggling with motivation or procrastination? Simply write down why, and then come up with three reasons why the task you're doing is important and meaningful. If something is difficult, it may be a stepping stone to something else. It may also be a benefit to you and others, so think about the reasons why it's challenging. Your efforts won't feel like work when you do this exercise. Moreover, no one enjoys doing chores or cleaning the house. No one will know the difference if you listen to a great audiobook, podcast, or song. Is there a coffee shop where you can work while having a snack? We tend to overlook the fact that every decision we make is a choice, and the way we frame that choice is critical. 
We need to rethink how we view tasks and push ourselves to enjoy productivity and living as much as we can. If you think you can do something to improve your situation, you'll be more motivated, Duhigg says. It's only after becoming aware of our individuality that we can begin to think about how we find meaning and connection in our lives. Make a chore into a meaningful decision, and self-motivation will emerge, advises Duhigg. Is there a time of day when you are most inspired? Having a sense of purpose and meaning in our work are two of the most important factors in increasing productivity for many of us. When our actions have a larger impact, we feel like we're making a difference in the world. Because it is part of something greater and more emotionally rewarding than the immediate task that needs to be done, as Duhigg explains, self-motivation is a choice we make. Setting the right objectives. Setting goals requires us to distinguish between stretch goals, which are lofty and challenging objectives, and more manageable goals. In essence, we want to make sure that our goals don't cause us to lose motivation, but rather that they help us stay motivated. The right way to set goals, according to Duhigg, is to have big goals and smaller core objectives. Studies show that people who have goals are more creative than those who don't. Through the use of stretch goals, we are able to significantly increase our output. Stretch goals, according to a Motorola study from 1997, led to a tenfold increase in product development across multiple departments. It's not just the big corporations that are affected. For many of us, it's difficult to find the drive and inspiration necessary to accomplish our goals. It can be difficult to lose weight, learn a new instrument, study, or write a large document. So, how do we go about doing this? Isn't that what we do? To some extent, yes. It's important to write the right kinds of lists if we want them to be of any use. Identifying our top three priorities should be the first step. Expansion objectives are more difficult to achieve. We expect you to feel a little overwhelmed and unsure of how you're going to approach these three objectives. Our SMART goals go here. We need five SMART questions to answer each of our stretch goals. SMART is a useful acronym to remember. Having a clear idea of what we want to accomplish helps us get there. How we measure our success is the focus of measure. Assessing the timeline for goals, and whether the goals need to be scaled back, is achievable. Realistic is determining whether our goals can be achieved with the resources at hand. Then there's the concept of time. Every goal must have a specific time frame. It is possible to break down difficult tasks into manageable chunks by using smart and stretch goals. Motivation is boosted when we achieve even the most minuscule of goals as we all know. So, the key to progress is to take small but significant steps. As a result of this, each small goal becomes a part of the larger objective. Using positive mental models to enhance concentration. Setting and achieving goals is critical to increasing one's effectiveness and output, but it's not sufficient on its own. What sets the most productive people apart from the rest is their ability to stick to a task because they create mental models. We all need to create mental models of how we want to approach our days. For example, we should plan out our day's activities and set specific goals. It's also a good idea to check in with ourselves throughout the day to see where we're headed. This way, we can make allowances for how the day unfolds. Realize that speed and appearance of busyness can be deceiving. As a general rule, we mistake the person who moves the most for the most productive person. While it may seem counterintuitive to slow down, creating a mental schedule and following it is essential for increasing productivity. To be productive, one must accomplish the most important tasks while also being methodical and in command of the situation. When we maintain our sense of control, we are better able to deal with life's unexpected twists and turns. Because we have a story we want to stick to when using a mental model, we are impervious to distractions. Inevitable distractions lead to irrational behavior. We're a step closer to achieving our goals if we're aware of distractions but can stick to our daily narratives. Positive mental models can be used in a variety of ways. Setting if slash then goals in meetings is an example. Intentions help us to concentrate our efforts and make long-term plans. Think about how you would respond in various situations, and then plan accordingly. So, if someone doesn't show up for work because they're sick, then this is how we will proceed with the day. It also works for more minor decisions we make throughout the day, which can have an impact on our overall well-being. For example, if we know we need to increase our water intake we can set an intention to drink a glass of water every hour or take the stairs every time we see them. Increasing our awareness of the world around us allows us to act with greater intention. Psychological safety and productivity are inseparable in the workplace. What makes a great team, and how can you go about assembling one? When it comes to dynamic teamwork, many people turn to Google for inspiration. Project Aristotle, a two-year big data study on teamwork, was the inspiration for Duhigg's invitation to Google. 
The project was based on the well-known Aristotelian quote, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. We might assume that the best teams are made up of people who get along well and are a mix of introverts and extroverts. However, the data shows otherwise. In a team, personalities and who's don't matter. In reality, there is no correlation between the success of a team and the number of people on it. What comes after that? Interactions were the next area of study that was examined by researchers. Things began to become clearer at this point in time. It doesn't matter if you don't get along with everyone on your team, the success of the team is dependent on the culture of the team as a whole. In the culture code, the five dysfunctions of a team, and dare to lead, we've learned about the importance of culture. Creating a successful team, according to Duhigg, begins with creating an environment where people feel safe. When it comes to maintaining one's emotional well-being, two things are essential, equality in communication and attentive listening. Team members should all speak for about the same amount of time, and listening is an area in which we all need to improve our skills. These two factors are considered the single greatest correlate to the success of a group, say experts. To sum it up, remember Cal Newport's distinction between real work and pseudo work? He made this distinction in his insightful book, How to Become a Straight A Student. Many of us believe that being more productive means working longer and harder. Contrary to popular belief, the most productive people aren't those who put in long shifts at the office or give up time with family. Effectiveness is the result of deliberate action. And how do we plan for the future? In other words, we tell ourselves tales, create narratives, and plot out our time in order to be most productive. Even though we may think that planning takes up valuable time, doing so increases focus, eliminates time-wasting activities, and equips us to deal with unexpected events. As a result of cultivating positive mental models, we can set better goals and be more deliberate in our daily schedules. For those of us who work in teams, fostering a culture of psychological safety makes all the difference. Every one of us should be examining the factors that separate us from simply appearing busy from actually being productive. As a result, we end up eating into our much-needed free time because we don't plan and strategize in advance. We all have the power to become more effective if we so desire. Achievable smart steps to your audacious goals are what you're looking for. Why not refocus your attention on the positive aspects of your situation? Faster learning occurs when we take our time, pause, and plan ahead. The more we know about how things might turn out, the more prepared and deliberate we can be in our work approach. So take a moment to think about what your story will be for the day. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook. 